Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about Chevron's retiree medical plans. Who's eligible and how much does it cost? My name is Stephen Chambers and I'm a wealth manager at Wells Johnson & Associates. Working at Chevron offers a lot of amazing benefits and those benefits sometimes don't just stop while you're working and they can actually pour into retirement. The medical benefit is one of those. So let's look at how to optimize your medical benefits in retirement. Eligibility. Let's first make sure that you are eligible for this awesome benefit. The two most common criteria are one, that you're at least 50 years old, and two, you have at least 10 years of service with Chevron. So let's talk about everyone's number one concern. What is it gonna cost me in retirement? So currently, the employee's portion of your premium is covered by you, the employee. The employer's portion is covered at 100%, so Chevron subsidizes the employer portion of the premium. Now in retirement, it's different. The percentage that Chevron covers in retirement is based off of your points. The points is based off of your age and years of service upon retirement. So for example, let's say at retirement you're 60 years old with 20 years of service. That would mean you have 80 points. Moving from the left to the right, you can see that based off of the 80 point scale or the 90 point scale, Chevron will cover either 100% of the premium or 75% of the employer premium. Now. For a vast majority of employees, you are subject to the 90-point scale. So in the example we described, 75% of the employer's portion of the premium would be subsidized by Chevron. What if you're not eligible for Chevron's retiree medical? Well, there's really two options. The first one is COBRA, which is essentially extending your coverage for about 18 months after you retire. At which point, if you're not ready for Medicare, you would have to enroll in a private policy via the open market. If you're retiring before 65, here are your health plan options. You have the PPO, the high deductible plan, the high deductible basic, and then the HMO plan. The two most common that we see are the PPO and the high deductible plan. How do you know which healthcare plan is the right one for you and your family? Cost and the general health condition of your family are two of the most important considerations to think about. Looking at 2023 numbers, the PPO plan has a higher monthly premium than the high deductible plan, but the deductible is much lower compared to the high deductible plan. If you're going to the doctors for just checkups and, and more of a maintenance mode type of thing, the high deductible plan could make a lot of sense and you're saving money every month. Whereas if you go to the doctor for more ongoing reasons, it might make sense to, to enroll in the PPO plan. For those who are retiring post 65, your insurance situation looks slightly different. You actually have to enroll in Medicare, which becomes your primary, and Chevron's benefits become your secondary. So what that looks like is this. You have two different plans, uh, the Medicare Advantage and the Medicare Supplemental. It's important to look through the details to determine which one makes the most sense for you. Another nuance for post-65 retirees is how the employer portion of the premium is is given back to you. So pre-65, if you remember, the premium is just reduced. Uh, for those who are post-65, the premium is reimbursed to you via an exchange. If you have people on your plan, let's say your spouse who is 60, and when you retire, you're 67, the employer's premium is slightly nuanced. So your spouse's premium is still just reduced, right, based off your years and age of service where your portion of the employer's premium is reimbursed through the Towers Watson Exchange. So slightly nuanced. At your death, your survivors can still be enrolled in your medical plan, assuming they continue to pay the premium. Uh, they'll just have to notify HR within a certain time period. With many things in life, the cost is subject to change and it's not set in stone at retirement and your medical coverage lasts the duration of your life, your survivor's life, and your dependent's life. If your dependent is age 26, then the coverage will lapse for them unless they are deemed uh, incapacitated, and in which case you can continue coverage for them. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on social media. We are happy to help.